Welcome to Making Stuff with Chris Dayhut, and I've got a surprise for you today. Raspberry Pi has just announced a brand new computer called the Raspberry Pi 500 Plus. It's built on the same form factor as the previous version, but they've added some wow with their plus. Let's start with the notable changes from the standard Pi 500. It's got 16 gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes of Raspberry Pi SSD. That's right, solid state drive built into the system. It's got a tactical mechanical keyboard with the KS-33 low profile switches that feel awesome. And finally, it's got a cool wow factor with programmable under key LEDs to jazz up the Pi 500 Plus experience. Now, if you're not familiar with the standard Pi 500, let's take a look at some of the existing or pre existing specifications. The processor is a 2.4 GHz quad core 64 bit ARM Cortex A76 CPU with cryptography extensions. It has 512K per core. L2 caches and a 2 megabyte shared L3 cache. The connectivity is done with dual band 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz IEEE 802.11b slash g slash n slash ac Wi Fi. Bluetooth 5.0 is included. It's got gigabit Ethernet. It has two USB 3 ports and one USB 2.0 port, two micro HDMI ports, a GPIO horizontal 40 pin GPIO connector. And that's one of the great features of a Raspberry Pi. It allows us to connect to the real world and do computing with information from the real world. The display output supports up to dual. 4K at 60 frames per second. For multimedia, we've got an H2.65, which is 4K, 60 frames per second decoding capability, and it has OpenGL ES 3.0 graphics built into the system. There's support for an M.2 NVMe SSDs up to 2280 length. It has a micro SD card slot for the operating system and data storage. But frankly, let's be realistic, we'll all be using that solid state drive. We only need the micro SD card slot to get the OS into the system. And as mentioned, we got Gatoron Blue KS-33 low profile switches that have a wonderful feel to them. And the power requirements are a 5 volt DC via USB-C connector. All that in the list price is just $200. No self-respecting maker would get a new computer and not open it up. But before I do that, I just want to show you the system. Uh, I think it's a teeny bit heavier than the 500. Mechanical keyboard. Feels great. Sounds great. Can't wait to see what it looks like with the LEDs under it. Along the back are the ports, gigabit Ethernet, our 40 pin GPIO, two HDMI outputs for uh, 4K 60 frame per second video, USB C input, micro SD card slot, two USB 3s, and a USB 2. Very compact, very sleek looking, very contemporary, very nice overall. So with that, I think it's time to see what's inside. And that's the whole computer system. You'll notice there's no fan. It uses this large aluminum heat sink to dissipate the heat. This little cover covers up all the ports so that nothing gets in their way. There's our solid state drive and you'll see that it can accept four different lengths all the way up to 2280. There's the main chip module, RP2040 in there to handle all the LEDs and switches and stuff. Just a remarkable feat of engineering to make it so compact. 
We're going to put this baby back together and our next step will be to get the OS installed and get it up and running. As always, the Raspberry Pi people have put together great documentation to help a person get all set up with their Raspberry Pi. Now I've already downloaded the Pi Imager software and what I need to do is put a micro SD card into my computer. So we want to choose a device that we're going to be installing this on. So we've got Raspberry Pi 500 Compute Module 5. This is the closest one to our computer. We're going to choose the OS. I'm going to go with Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit. And then I need to choose the storage device. And that would be the one that I want to select. Always be very sure of that selection. And with that, we'll go ahead and create our SD drive or our SD card with the installation OS on it. We'll click Next. No, I don't want to edit the settings at this time. And yes, I have the correct drive selected. This will take a while to write. As a reminder, the OS does not come pre-installed on the system, so we have to install it and to do that. The most typical way to do it is to use this imager, create a copy of the OS installation file, then we will install the OS on the Pi 500 Plus with the SD card. Once all that's complete, then we'll copy it over to the solid state drive and set the boot order so that it runs on that. So we'll let this run and we'll come back when it's all ready for us to go on to the next step. With that, we can say continue, close this out, and remove the SD card from the computer. To get things running, you're going to need an SD card. Uh, 16 gigabytes of work. This one's a 32, just what I had available. So we'll get that inserted. You're going to need a monitor. And with the proper end on it, micro SD, so I'll plug that in. I think this is the one that we needed to start with. If it doesn't seem to show up on screen, I know I'm in the wrong port. I am going to need to provide power to it. For that, I picked up a Canakit 45 watt power supply. And that should provide enough juice. And we're also going to need a mouse. Okay, I've inserted the SD card label side up. We'll power up the Raspberry Pi 500 Plus by pressing the keyboard's power button. Now I might miss a few of the first seconds of this as I'm capturing the video as the system boots up. And it does flash a few times, so I might miss something. And there we are. Now we can go ahead and finish the configuration for our boot up. I am not in the UK, I am in the US. I've got American English time zone. I am in Central Standard Time, which they just simply call Chicago. I am using the English language, but I have a UK keyboard. So I'm going to leave that as is. We'll move on to the next step. We need to create a user account, and I need to give it a password. I will be selecting Zoomtown as my Wi-Fi network. I want to select Chromium as my browser, and I'll leave Firefox in there in case I ever want to tinker with that. We've updated everything. Now we're going to click Next to update the software, and this can take a long time, so we'll let it run. OK, 
Okay, system is all updated. We can click OK. And it's going to want us to restart. Once it gets done booting up, we can start the process of bringing the solid state drive to life and making it a boot drive. To begin that process, we'll click our Raspberry. We're going to go to Accessories and SD Card Copier. We're going to copy from the SC, in my case, SC32G. That's the SD card. And I'm going to copy it to Solid State Drive. I will click Start. This will erase all content on that drive. Now at this point, the OS is on the SSD or the solid state drive, but it is not activated yet. During the boot up, the system won't know what to do. So we're going to set the boot order. To do that, we're going to type in our command prompt, sudo raspi hyphen config, and we'll have a menu here. We're going to go to advanced options, we're going to check that the bootloader version is up to date, and we'll just select the first item to make sure of that. The latest software to use, but we still have one more step. Advanced Options, Boot Order. We want to boot from the NVMe before trying USB or the SD card. NVMe is the solid state drive. So we'll hit OK on that. And we will exit out of this. Exit out of this. And I'm going to say no on the reboot. Because what I want to do is a shutdown that'll allow me to remove the SD card and then I'll power up again. And it says trying to boot mode, NVMe appears to be happy, and we are booted up already. That is blazing fast. How fun is that? Instead of sitting here waiting for a minute or two while all the data gets read off of the SD card. Next up, I think we'll go on to the internet. We'll open another browser tab. We'll go to FreePick. And we'll take a look at some fast-paced videos to see how well the Pi 500 Plus can handle video. Wow, that's some amazing video. It looked great on the Pi 500 Plus. And for a quick preview of how cool the keyboard is, I'm going to hold down the function key and press F4. That is one of the presets. It's all white, all red, multicolored. Well, that might make typing a little bit on the tricky side, but most people do touch typing anyhow. Very cool effect. And I am told by Raspberry Pi that there will be a utility to allow you to configure your own LED color presets. How cool is that? With only a few days to work with it, so far I'm finding this computer impressive, and most important to me is the good performance I'm seeing from it. The combination of this SSD drive along with the 16 gigs of RAM seem to be a great combination to boost performance. To test this performance, it will be integrated into our series titled the Zoomtown Experiment. This experiment has been going on for two years and this Raspberry Pi 5 Plus showed up at the perfect time. This computer will be used as the central controller for Zoomtown, where 16 small robotic cars will travel from location to location autonomously and simultaneously. The Pi 5 Plus is going to have a lot of telemetry data to process, and I believe it is up to the task. Join us on that project if you're interested. I'll put a link down below in the description. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please subscribe, share it with others, or give me a thumbs up. 
I would greatly appreciate it.